cigars that they're throwing at. I'm telling you this because I just have to let someone know about it. It was the freakiest thing I've ever seen. To begin, I've always been interested in movies about nuclear war from the 1950s until today. I ended up joining a forum about them. I won't tell you which one. I don't want anyone to be able to find me or it. I don't want anyone else to ever see this, and especially never want to risk a child seeing it. Soon after joining it, I became friends with another member. No, I won't give you a screen name. As I said, I want to keep this from getting out. Last year, he told me he had something for me and wanted to meet it, to give it to me. I have some disabilities to the point I can't have a driver's license, and I also live in an area with no public transportation. Because of this, we agreed to meet in a park in my town. When we did meet, he handed me a VHS tape. Yes, 2015 VHS tape. Luckily, or maybe I should say unluckily, I still have a late 1990s era VHS player. He told me he didn't know the story behind it, just that it was made in late 1983, early 1984, not long after the day after movie aired. And if you don't know what that is, it's on YouTube. He also said it involved the long-running children's TV show Sesame Street. He didn't know if it was a sick joke, if the show tried to make something for kids about nuclear war for some reason, or if it was something else. He left rather quickly. I can definitely say it was far too high of quality to be a bootleg. Whoever made it had either have access to the real studio of Sesame Street or a lot of money to make it look exactly the same. Anyway, I went home, and yes, I decided to watch. I poured myself a beer, then went in, turned on the TV, put the tape in the VCR, and immediately something was disturbing. The Sesame Street logo appeared and stayed on for a couple minutes, and there was no normal intro. Uh, I stopped watching around 1982, but I saw it coming on when my parents babysat my younger cousins as late as about 1989, so... I know it hadn't become this. There was no, this episode is sponsored by the letters whatever and the number whatever or the sunny day song. It just went to a shot of the typical street setting. And there was a flash of light and a loud boom. Next there was a scene of cartoon human figures turning into skeletons like in the attack scene in The Day After. Then it went black for a few seconds. This is when things got even worse. It started panning across what was normally seen. Mr. Hooper's store collapsed. That 123 building had some pieces missing. All the windows were shattered and the building was on fire. All you could hear was the find. Fires burning, occasionally a scream or moan. When I went past some ruined buildings, you could see skeletons and shadows on the walls. None of the human characters, Bob, Maria, Gordon, etc., were in this episode. Only Muppets. Were they all killed? Things continued to get worse. The scene panned to an alley with a trash can laying on its side. Soon, Oscar the Grouch appeared, crawling in the street, obviously in pain. He then turned to the camera. Half his face was burnt off. Cut to a cartoon. It was that 1950s duck and cover one. I don't know if it was an early PSA or only shown in classrooms at the time. I didn't ask as I didn't want this getting out, but that was well before I was born. Would have even been before my mom could remember. Maybe even my dad. None of my grandparents were alive yet, and I wouldn't have asked them anyway. Next, I went to a dark room. Outside a broken window, you could see fires burning. Then the sound of sobbing came. The camera moved, and Bert was in Ernie's arms, obviously dead. Ernie sobbed maybe a minute and then started hysterically bawling. Mercifully, it didn't last long. Next was another cartoon, this time a crudely drawn, unidentified city. An animated missile flew over and detonated. There were scenes of the city destroyed, including cars turning over, overpasses being crushed, etc. 
much like the attack scene in the British 1980s nuclear war cartoon When the Wind Blows. It was faded out and it returned to the 123 building. The fires had mostly burned out. But now fallout was raining, raining down from the sky. The camera panned down through a basement in a room below. Apparently the building had a fallout shelter. In the room were some shelves, a table with a battery-operated lantern giving off light with several chairs around and sitting. Sitting around the table were Cookie Monster, Harry, Perry Don, Grover. They had looks of shock, fear, sadness, confusion. None made a sound. I swear, this scene lasted more than five minutes with no sound. Finally faded out. Next was back out on the street. Big Bird was lying in the road moaning and asking for Mr. Snuffleupagus. The show never made quite clear. The show in general, not this episode, if he was real or a figment of Big Bird's imagination. But this... Either way, this was bad. Some of his feathers were burned while others had fallen out. He'd vomited in the street... Mr. Snephalophagus never showed up, and this scene was mercifully short. Next was those aliens who always tried to figure out what things were and usually got it wrong. The one who would say, yep, yep, ah, uh, ah. Uh. They were out in the country and saw the mushroom cloud appear. They were saying, no, no, no. Not, nope, nope. They got into the flying saucer and took off. The last scene was back in the bunker. Cookie Monster went to a shelf and turned on a radio. There was a first static and then the voice of Kermit the Frog. He sounded much more scared than I ever heard him on there. The Muppet Show, movies, anywhere else. His voice every so often would break as he was trying not to cry. He said, This, this is the Sesame Street News. I don't know why, EMP, I imagine, but our TV cameras don't work. I found an old radio and I'm using it. The city has been bombed, been hit by an atomic bomb. Sesame Street has been hurt bad. If you don't know, an atomic bomb is a really, really big and really bad bomb that can wreck a whole city. It also has something really bad called radiation that can really hurt you if you're near it. I, I can't find anyone who knows anything more. We'll get back when I, and if I can, Kermit off. Cookie Monster switched the radio off. The scene then faded to black and the normal credits rolled with no sound or music whatsoever. I haven't watched this video since I was even at 42 years of age, it was too disturbing for me to go back to. What was whoever made this thinking? I haven't contacted the guy who gave it to me since. I keep the tape locked in a cabinet. There's no damn way I'll ever let there be a chance a child can see this. Don't try to contact me to ask me if you can watch it. No way. Or to ask me anything about it. For one thing, I don't know. For another, I wouldn't tell you if I did. 